StarCraft fans, it's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 a Legacy of the Void. And today it's going to be a cheese compilation, the last one of 2022 for December. And again, if you want me to send your cheese, send it to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com. With the subject of cheese, make sure it's seven minutes or less. And if it's more than seven minutes, make sure it is action packed. All right, so bottom right, we've got Maraud Squad from the Hyper One clan. He has a blue Zerg player going pool first. Bottom left, we've got Lily Black. He is also a member of Hyper One's clan. He is an orange Terran player. And this is Golden Wall. All right, man. So these two players are playing each other. It's not red versus blue, so it's not a ladder match. And I feel like it's a custom match because they're both in the same clan and Golden Wall is the map. And all right, man. Okay, so pool first into an extractor, into another extractor versus Three ra Ooh, quadruple racks. Quadruple racks rush from Lily Black. All right. We got the cheese compilation started out super well today. Again, thanks to my screeners who help me by screening every single replay that I get for the cheese compilation. Somicron, Stefan, Jim, and Sniper Monkey. Uh, those four are such a mainstay. We've got a Roach Horn coming up. Uh, a little bit of a scratchy throat here today, but that will not stop me from casting the cheese. So, roaches are good against unupgraded marines. As no gas indicates that it's going to be unupgraded marines. Are we going to see? Are we going to see? Are we going to see the... <laughs> Maraud Squad accidentally scouting. Well, intentionally scouting for these proxies from Lily Black. All right. So, oh, okay. So three of the barracks are finished. This one, maybe? Maybe this one will get done? SCVs are pretty good fighters against unupgraded lings. All right. So he has advanced warning, but all four barracks are completed or will be completed as long as Lily Black completes this one. Hmm. So, four roaches here on the way. We've got two marines marching up and killing an overlord. Overlord, run! Run for it! Oh, we're doing ravagers. Okay. And roaches. Get out of here! Oh, ravagers and roaches together are just so... Okay, yeah, this is... This is why you don't trickle in your units two or three at a time here. Yeah, Lily Black is going to be a, in a tough position here. Gets that fourth barracks complete. Still no gust back home. Yeah, this is as all-in as all-in can possibly get, but fantastic play. Maraud Squad gets lucky with the coin flip, right? The Paper Rock Scissors on the opening here. Straight up goes pool first, intending to go Ravager Rush. And hey, it's a direct counter to this proxy Marine shenanigan stuff. Because again, unupgraded Marines, not good against Roaches and Ravagers at cost. Upgraded Marines at cost, pretty good against Roaches and Ravagers. But in this situation, see, one of the Ravagers has already died. We need a roach in here tanking some of this damage. You go, okay, all right, all right. There we go. Good micro here. It's only, you know, eight to two army supply. So um, these barracks are taking direct hits. Going to try to crossbile these suckers down. More roaches in production. More trying to join this party. Uh, nice saying that, but not really. Maraud Squad floating about 200 minerals and 200 gas. But yeah, fantastic. Really fun opening here. I really don't see any way that Lily Black wins this thing. Although, I don't know, Terrans do have some magical power where they can do this proxy stuff, fail miserably, and still win the game. But you got to do that by, like, getting a tank out at the top of this ramp. I'm not sure a bunker is going to be enough, my friend. Mi amigo. All right, more Ravagers happening here. Do we have an Overlord scouting this high ground for the Zerg player? No. Not as much, but yeah, these Ravagers are coming up as fast as they can, killing these SCBs, building these bunkers would be hot. They're just busting right through the wall before any- Ooh, kill the SCB, building the bunker? Ah, oh, that sucks! SC- Oh, that was so close to being finished. Oh, uh, Wait, other SCB comes in- Oh, does finish! Okay! But are there any Marines to get inside that bunker? No, there's one in production, it's not quite there yet. Getting- Oh uh, yeah, bunker dying is fan- Uh, that's a GG. GG, Lily Black. Struggling here against the Maraud Squad. Well done, Maraud Squad. Well done, members of Hyper One's clan. You know Hyper One if you like the cheese comp, right? We've got some of his own replays coming in, but he's not exotic his own clan now. 
And they are as cheesy as he is sometimes. GG, Lily Black out, and Marat Squad is your winner in 451. Excellent. Under seven minutes. Not a worker rush. Pretty high level play there, I'd say. 168 p.m. on average from Marat Squad. 114 from Lily Black. That's what we like to see in the cheese compilation. Thank you so much for sending that one in. And let's go to the next one. No time. No time for chit chat. Game number two is here on Tropical Sacrifice. This is a current ladder map. Top side is going to be Shadow Slayer from the lights. And in the bottom side, it's Drone of Arc. What a great name. Holy cow, that's a great name. From the clan Meow with a little cat sticker here. Maybe it's a baby tiger? I feel like that's a baby tiger, not a cat. But do baby tigers say Meow? I kind of feel like they do. So, two ships passing in the night here. They did not see each other. Both players worker scouting. Which is a good idea, or maybe just proxying. Double proxy here from Shadow Slayer and Drone of Arc. Okay. Could be some interesting stuff here. This is a real interesting place to send it. Maybe Cannon Rush starts here on the low ground, gets onto the high ground. If a Terran can't get a tank out or a bunker or in a really nice position, Cannon Rushes can definitely kill Terrans. But better Terrans, just, they scout it, they shut it down, they get some Marines out, they get that bunker up. They go for a factory. Yeah, here we go. So Proxy Racks down south and a pylon coming up up north here. This probe comes in and says, I'm just scouting. No, there's no shenanigans here. No Surrey Bob. I'm not building pylons. I'm not trying to do anything to murder you. Mm, mm, mm. And it is going to be cannons because that is a forge from Drone of Arc. Okay. So do we even need cannons on the low ground? Yeah. Well, hmm. If SCVs are going to be trying to kill these cannons, then yeah, for sure. Cannons on the low ground will protect ones on the high ground. I see you're a man of culture as well, says Drone of Arc. <laughs> so Drone of Arc is just like, yeah, you don't have any barracks at home, so you're proxying me for sure. He hasn't scouted this. He doesn't know this is here, but he knows what's going on. He sniffs it. He smells it. Okay. So yeah, cannon low ground. Pile on on the high ground. Good timings here. We're going to start creeping in. SCV is coming up. They will get some time to work away at this pile on, but this cannon below is finishing up momentarily. Meanwhile, kind of, yeah, okay. There's cannon rushing back here on the mineral line, too. Uh, this is going to get interesting. Yeah, cannon chases away. The SCV is killing this pile on. These SCVs are just there. They don't know what to do. They're trying to go around the outside, around the outside, but. A little bit too late for that. No, actually, you know what? They're going to kill these cannons. They're going to lose some friends. There you go. Actually, no. I don't think any SCVs died there at all. But a lot of them are very injured to the point that this probe could probably touch them and they would die. Look at this. He's just distract, 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 distract. And, oh, this cannon. It's not in a range of the base, but it's very close. Drone of Arc needs to stop building cannons up here. I understand the value of the distraction, but... And, oh, this is it. That's your GG. You just put a cannon in coverage of this other cannon in range of the base. And that, oh, or that, sure. That works, too. Um. <laughs> well, defensive cannon back home. What's Shadow Slayer doing? He was going Marauder Rush. He's getting concussive shell. He's making Marauders. This, this might be Shadow Slayer. He might end up lifting this orbital and taking it to his natural. And just continuing the Marauder Rush, because Marauders are really good against cannons. And that one cannon on the top of that ramp is not going to be enough to save the world. At all. My gosh, continuing. Yeah, I'm serious. Yeah, look at this. These probes are fighting. They're like, you guys are actually super duper injured here. Even some of them that aren't incredibly injured are still dying to these probes because they're not defending themselves at all. And, you know, probes hit. They don't hit super hard, but if you let them tap you enough, you're going to just straight up die. Yeah, all right. So that's a lifted orbital. We're going to go down to the natural base now. Thank you for asking. Although, if you bring the... I don't know. Yeah, these probes are both dead, actually. Careful with your... All right, fine. Both probes died. Uh, That actually sucks. If you're going to chase... Continue this cannon rush down here, you needed a probe over this way, and that's not happening. So, Drone of Arc. Again, Protoss player, intriguingly enough. <laughs> Anyway, uh, okay, so main base abandoned by Shadow Slayer. Marauder, here goes nothing. Here goes the thing. Yeah, this cannon's gonna die. There's no way this cannon lifts, not even close. Oh, maybe if it doesn't get attacked. I, I lied. 
Maybe if it doesn't get attacked. Oh, man. No Marauders died. Oh, okay. Secondary cannon is up. But it's being powered by this pylon. Oh, no. And, oh, they can't get surrounded by probes unless they do this. Okay. Well, actually, the probes could have mineral walked through that gap, right? Oh, accidentally attacking the buildable plates. Or unbuildable plates, rather. Not great. Yeah, I mean, that zealot's dead. This, or this cannon. Ah! This is turning into some insane play here. I don't know if these probes want to go down there. It's just, okay, stop running into cannon range without trying to kill it, man. I think you can. He's, like, making more marauders. He does have that mineral income here. He's sitting on about 41 gas, so it's not a ton for marauders here, but reinforcing marauders come in. This pylon dies. Okay, now it's probes fighting, which, again, not bad against marauders here. Which is why he's kiting away, because he doesn't want to die to the probes. That'd be really embarrassing. Oh, there's another cannon. Ca oh, a shield battery. And that's a well played. Shadow Slayer wins it. Drone of Arc taps out, recognizes. Oh, got, I got cheesed on the other end. Uh, so, so it's double cheese for the first two replays of the cheese comp. Oh, that's so good. That makes my cheesy heart happy here for Falcon Paladin. So hit that like button if you haven't already. This is a beautiful beginning to a beautiful friendship here between the cheesed and the cheeser. Both players may be cheesing too. Love it. I love it. Again, this is kind of a coin flip thing, right? You're cannon rushing a Terran. He has the ability to lift off and flee, so you really got to make sure you take him down. You didn't, and then he was also proxy marauder rushing you with concussive shell. So, rough stuff. So rough. But that is, that's your GG. So let's move it into game the next. We're here on Stargazers. Basically, Golden Wall just flipped. Top right, going to be M4. Top left, going to be Baniac. Returning player, Baniac. It's going to be a ZVZ here. Who's going to be the cheeser? Hmm. So, ZVZs can be fairly cheesy. Uh, proxy spine crawlers, worker rushes, roach rushes. Maybe some Nidus play. Maybe a Baneling bust. Have fun, good luck, says Baniac. And, okay, so I feel like Baniac, I feel like Baniac is gonna be the cheeser here today. Anyway, hope you're enjoying the cheese comp so far. Those first two games were sick. Those are super good. Thanks for Shadow Slayer sending that one in. Lily Black, uh, actually, no, that Marauder guy for sending that one in. Lily Black might have sent it in. Lily Black might be an upstanding individual. Lily Black is actually from the Beast of the Hill videos. Uh, it's a it's an arcade version of, of a free for all map where you basically hold the center and you get minerals and you get points if you're on the center when the, uh, the timer runs out every five minutes there's a little timer that runs out you get points and the first one to three points wins if you're not watching those you're missing out the beast of the hell free for alls are a ton of fun I might put a link to them in the top right here I never use the cards anymore but maybe this time maybe this time somebody will click I stopped using them because it'd be like one person ever in the history of this card has ever clicked on it. And it's like, yeah, okay. I don't know if that's worth my time. But neither player are going crazy. I mean, both players are going hatch first. Into pool. Into gas. So, I mean, this is 16, 18, 17 opening here. But, again, can get pretty cheesy from this point. Especially for Zerg. I mean, just random ling flood timings can be incredibly dangerous, too. So we'll see. We'll see what we get here from these players. Both players taking their gas at the good time. You know, it's not like the extractor finished and then five seconds later they saturated it. Really beautiful opening here. And Overlord scouting in. M4 scouting the natural base of Baniac and gets information. Baniac is scouting the main base of M4, gets even better information. But now that queens are starting to pop, the time of the Overlord scouting over here is over. Which is funny, because in Brood War, you don't get any anti-air until they get a Hydralisk Den down. So you have to go Spawning Pool, Gas, wait, get a Hydralisk Den down, then make some Hydras, and then you can chase the Overlords away. So Overlords and ZBZs can just kind of hang out over your bases for a lot longer in Brood War. But you're not here for Brood War, you're here for StarCraft 2, which is, by golly, 12 years old now. Can you believe that? That's nuts. Oh, Baniac is going for a proxy hatch over here. Oh, well, that's what that drone was doing. And it gets scouted by M4. M4 is like, ah, oh, nope. You, no, I'm not going to let you do this. And the lings are like, no, Baniac says, stop. Leave my hatchery alone. I love it. Is he going to try to, like, slow ling flood? 
today. That seems like a bad idea. He needs to get these lings out. Oh, M4 is thinking about throwing up his own hatchery here. He's game. He's game. He's ready for this proxy stuff. I'll do one too. And then Biniac says, no, I'm the only one who can do it. Oh, and then he builds some drones here, mines this back mineral wall out, and gets free access to the main base of M4. But you know what the crazy thing is? It's a CVZ. This is wide open anyway, man. Like, I don't know that sneaking in is really going to avail you all that much. Ah, here come the drones on defense. Oh, but they can't get a surround. Oh, these drones. Okay. Yeah, they're fighting one at a time. They're going to die. Are there any more lings on the way from Baniac? No, but M4 is replacing his drones because these ones... A lot of them are going to, not all of them, and actually fewer of them died than I thought would. Queen shows up. Oh, M4's got a queen over, or two queens over here, too. Queen, really good fighter against drones, because she comes up with armor. And drones, oh my gosh, they do so little damage already. That armor really matters. All right, well, speed's done for Baniac. He's like, you know what? If I just kind of run in, I bet your queens are here. So, uh, I bet your drones are pretty unguarded, yeah? And yeah, he's sending lings down the southern way. He's like, you worry about this all you want, man. M4's throwing up spines? and This is a waste of resources. No! Okay, and yeah, that's it. The lings get in. Like I said, there's nothing defending these drones over here. So, M4 overreacting mightily to this whole thing. Because, again, so what if he's mi uh, mined this wall out and can get access to your main base? You could do that going through here, too. You didn't wall off or anything. Oh, man. All right. So, M4 is like, um, 445 worker rush. Remember, I said no worker rushes, but I meant no worker rushes if it's something we haven't seen before. And this is, I think this counts as something I haven't seen before, which is an attempted worker rush at 457. Recognizing he has, um, well, a bunch of drones remaining, but none of them are mining. So, that's not great. Also, there's defensive spines from Baniac. Love that for him. Yeah, queens, lings, spines. He's going to be great. I mean, number four, I think he's just going to straight up lose all of his bases before he even gets here. With it. Oh, he's bringing his own spines. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is that's a dead hatchery. That's a dead spawning pool. He's going to try to bust it, but he's going to be eliminated way before he even come close to busting that through. So that's your GG. Yeah, spawning pool very close to dead. Spine crawlers burrow. They get... One, two, three, four, five hits off, and uh, oh, his spine crawlers count as buildings. Wait, derp! <laughs> oh, I'm stupid. Like, well, that's all your buildings down. Your spines won't get any hits off at all. No, the spines count as buildings. Dude, how often has it ever been that a Zerg player is alive because they have three spines and that's it? Not very often, I would say. Spadiac's getting his own spines up here. The, again, the benefit is that he has income, and M4 does not. So coming up this ramp is going to be dicey. There's already a spine here. These queens, these links. Don't let that thing burrow. Don't let... Hey! Spadiac <laughs> kill the sp... Okay. We're just going to let them burrow right here. No problem. Get, and then we're going to try to engage with it. Seems like a bad idea. Yeah, all right. So it's not really a stalemate because Baniac has income and M4 does not. But, you know, he killed the second base over here, which is awesome stuff. There's a Roach Warren. Oh, he's trying to burrow spines in range of other spines, but it's just not going to work. GG! And Baniac is our winner in 650 under seven minutes. That's what we like to see. CC si, si, Senor, well done. Well done, Maniac. Gets that win. It was very weird. Proxy hatchery to mine through a mineral wall that doesn't really mean anything. And then <laughs> M4 built spines on the creep afforded by that hatchery to walk them over here and try to proxy spine and kill his opponent. It might have worked if he'd had any income at all back home, but very smart play from Maniac. Sending links across the middle of the map, getting in there, killing everything. The undefended drones stood no chance. Ah, good stuff. Good stuff from Baniac. And that's a Z ZVZ. Gotta love a good ZVZ in the cheese comp. It seems like we always have one, which is fun. Cool! More cheese? No way! Inside and out. It is Hyper One. I promised you a Hyper One. Top right, gonna be Hyper One of the Hyper One clan. Bottom left, it is Pylon. So a ZVP here on Inside and Out. From the current map pool, not on the current patch. 
And Hyper One has some designs for this drone. Check out falconpaladin.store for merchandise. We've got two types of hoodies. We've got hats. We have got t-shirts. We've got mugs. Check it out if you're interested. And an Terry the Overlord shirt coming in. Maybe it's already here. I have no idea. I'm casting this about a week in advance here. So, Hyper One says... Just blocking... <laughs> just harassing... Uh, does get the gateway down, does pile on. <laughs> Harassing this probe. And proxy hatching. Alright, man. Proxy hatching at the natural base of pylon. The response to this is four to five probes working on it. And then when the zealot pops, the zealot works on it too. And you can kill it before it pops up. So, let's see here if pylon knows what to do when... A Zerg player places down a hatchery in your natural. Uh, all right, man. Cray, cray, cray stuff here. And also taking his own second base back home. Smart. I like it. He's like, are you really not going to... Not... Pylon's like, I don't care. I'm good. I'm good to go. So I've got to tell you a quick story here as Pylon's not worried about this whatsoever. So one of my, my like $50 a month tier for patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin is I will send you a voice message every month where I will say whatever you want me to say. Send me a script. I'll do it. I can be your answering machine message, your like voicemail message. I can send a congratulations voice something to somebody you know. Uh, actually, the cameo came out, right? Maybe I could do video video messages too. Not a bad idea. So somebody finally, five years after I started Patreon, is like, hey, do this thing for my buddy. He just had his kid. Just had his first kid, and he plays Protoss, and I have some things I want you to say, and I did it, and it was really fun, and it was awesome. So Hyper One, I don't know if he had any intentions of doing this. Meanwhile, he's getting cannon rushed on the other side. Hyper One is in peril. His pool just finished. He's just now making a queen at this base, which... This Zealot should be really attacking this. I, just Some help would here would be nice. I know he's worried about Ling showing up and murdering him. Also, Hyper One can see this now because his hatchery finished. Uh, yeah. Okay, so his hatchery is toast. I, uh, hmm. Hyper One getting a queen out here is something that I did not expect to happen. Although, again, the fact that Pylon just kind of let this come up. Oh, he's letting the Adept attack this thing? What the heck? No, it's the queen's job to, or the, the zealot's job to attack this building. Why are you chasing a queen with an adept pylon? Getting a creep tumor down. Oh, this is the love. This is what every Zerg player wants to do. He's like, well, this sucks, but this is good. Getting a creep tumor down in your opponent's natural base at three minutes is just, ugh, is muy perfecto. I like it. It's so good. Oh, no, my hatch is dead, but you're never getting rid of this creep. Ha, 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 ha. Hyper One says, I guess I'll take, oh my gosh, a third base over here. Pylon's like, nah, you won't actually. And this Overlord says, am I getting cannon rushed? Oh, yes, I am. Bad. Ooh, Hyper One snuck some lings in here and has a baneling nest. What in the, did he make those lings from this hatchery? Uh, apparently, oh gosh, no, that's, no. No, the humanity. <laughs> It's still 13 workers for Pylon, so he's not, like, out of it. Oh, no, he GG's! No, Pylon! No, you've got him contained to one base! No! <laughs> no, no, I get it. You're only at seven workers. It's bad. There's creep in your natural base. That's bad. You're, again, at seven workers, still bad. But Hyper One's a one-basing Zerg player with one trick. And he did it. He did the pylons inside your base. He must have made those links from this hatchery. He did. Well, the hatchery died, and then he used the larva to make links. And then he cruises them up here, and the adepts are like, what are you doing up there? And then the adepts like, oh, I'll just die. That's real bad. And then he's like, huh, well, got links free. Oh, I mean, no, 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 no. Okay, so those are extra links that he made. These links... Um. Yeah, these were just made here too. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. I get it. I was not watching the production tab. Hyper One, I'm sorry. 
Alright, so yeah, these lings come through. Pylon doesn't notice what's happening. And then he's like, he's had these lings up here forever, and then he starts a baneling nest. Then he's like, you know what would be good here is banelings. Oh, that's hilarious. And yeah, he's all worried about this hatchery like I was. And worried about this going down like I was. And Hyper One the whole time just biding his time. Waiting, making some more lings here. His cannons casually got, you know, four kills. The Adept comes up. Hyper One makes the great choice to kill it. And then, makes some banelings. And without... Without this hit... He's okay. I really think he is. Regardless, a bit of an early lose, a bit of an early leave there. This hatch dying for Hyper One is so bad. So bad, but he didn't have to deal with it because he could snuck painlings. Yeah, so this is why you kill this, you guys. A Protoss players pull four or five probes off the line, attack it as it's coming up, chrono boost out a zealot, use the zealot to attack it too, and you'll be fine. Kill that thing before the queen comes out and throw, lays down a creep tumor. Kill this thing before lings pop out and create banelings in your main and then wreck your economy. Okay, great. Glad we've learned that lesson. Well done, Hyper One. We have more. Cheese. We're on Cosmic Sapphire. Bottom right, Hyper One. He's back. This time he's Terran. And on the top left, we've got Thorn, who's a Zerg player who is blue. And Hyper One again, moving out very early with an SCV. Pretty much as the game started. And pinging to himself. <laughs> Defend this. He says to Thorn, but Thorn can't see it. Ah, shouting into the void here is Hyper One. All right, so proxies. Oh, walling off this with barracks and bunkers, and you can't get a surround to Zerg, and woof. This is gonna be bad. This is gonna be bad for Thorn. I feel it, I feel it in my bones. Hatch firsting it is Thorn. No worries, no worries about this barracks coming up right right inside just barely inside his natural base <laughs> ah. uh. hatcheries coming up have such such low visibility low visual distance here and still still can't see this one all right man <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry, Thorn. Oh, sorry, Thorn. All right, well, I think Thorn's a dead Zerg here. Dead nerd, quite possibly. He just has no concept this is happening. This Overlord's not scouting fast enough. This Overlord's looking for proxies, but guess where they are, Thorn? He came around this back way, and he's kind of got vision here, but he doesn't have vision here. Uh, oh, and he's building a bunker at the top of this ramp, which is not visible to the Zerg player either. Dude, Hyper One has got this figured out. On this map, you can do these things. All right, well, Drone comes down and says, oh, oh, kill surprise, quick. Kill these bunkers, quick, kill these Marines. Uh, hold it, let the, you gotta kill the SCV building that bunker. Where's the Marine? <laughs> Hoofing it, hoofing it, getting body blocked and killed before he gets in. This guy, yo, he gets in. He gets in the bunker, gets in the bunker, Shinji. Okay, well, uh, so this, I mean, I don't know if the second bunker is entirely necessary, but this bunker's doing work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, even repairing it is possible here. Why is he sending the SCV inside that bunker? Repair this one. Dude, repair it so hard. Okay, now he can fall back. He's going to salvage it. And then he falls back to this one. Yeah, this is, yeah, all right. This is a bit of an interesting twist on this whole thing. Um. Oh, he's just rallying Marines up to die here. It's four to 13 workers. Thorns at four drones remaining. We've got some Queens, you know, pretty good fighters against Marines. Not gonna say no to that at all, but that's it. Hyper One wins it. Brutal. <laughs> Brutality, Hyper One. So usually you build bunkers here. And then kind of like, yeah, then just kind of kill this natural and gradually work your way up to this area. But no, Hyper One's like, if I put bunkers in here, he won't see it until it's too late. True. That's exactly what happened. 
All right, GG. Well done, Hyper One. Well executed. Brutal on the part of Thorn. I, I saw it. I foresaw this outcome. Thorn died. I mean, even Rogue has trouble with his particular strategy on this particular map. So what chances Thorn have? I don't know. Not much of one. Well executed by Hyper One, though. And my gosh, we have more cheese. Of course we have more cheese. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hey, it's Nightscape. I like this map. It's all shiny. So we've got a 2v2 here. Top side. Gonna be a Protoss. It is Petrinus, who is red. But there's such a weird light on this map. It doesn't look red. And his teammate, it's a blue Terran. It is Nerd Herd. Uh, down south, it's gonna be Lion Cat. What's up, Lion Cat? I love Lion Cat. And then plays Badly's here, too. So 2v2. These two blo players know each other quite well. Lion Cat moving out with three SCVs for proxy shenanigans. Ah, uh, so Lion Cat, man, I love you so much. Lion Cat is the person who actually got me access to my 3080 that I bought. Good golly, is it? It's not two years ago now, is it? Oh man, maybe it's like a little bit less than that, but it has been a hot minute. But yeah, I wanted to buy a 3080, couldn't find one for retail anywhere, which is like, it's still kind of a problem. And he was able to get me access to buy, buying one for the retail cost, which shouldn't feel like an incredible thing, but it is. And it was an incredible thing back then, so thanks again, Lion Cat. You're the best. Seriously, Lion Cat. Everyone show love for Lion Cat. He's our guy. I mean, I know he's proxying, but like... <laughs> Other than that, I promise he's an upstanding fellow. Yeah, so my 3080's been nice, playing things like Cyberpunk 2077 and The Witcher 3 on higher graphic settings and... The Witcher 3 kind of remaster that they came out with recently. Um, what else? What else have I been playing that is fairly demanding on the GPU? Uh, oh, I've been doing Half-Life Alex. The 3080 handles that quite nicely. Routing that to the VR. I mean, it's a... My kid has a Quest 2? Oculus 2? I, I don't know. I don't know the naming conventions here, but... Yeah, it's awesome. He can wirelessly have my computer here running the Alex, the Half-Life Alex, and then it just streams it wirelessly over the Wi-Fi network in the house to his headset. It's awesome. It's truly awesome stuff. Uh, it's, VR has gone so far. All right, so both plays badly and Lion Cat are proxying down here, which you can see with your own eyes. I just didn't say it until this point. Let's see if Petrinus and Nerd Herd can handle it. Uh, the other rule for the cheese comp is the higher level you are, the more likely your game is to be cast. So if you're a GM player cheesing, send it in. Right? I mean, if you're a Bronze League player cheesing, don't not send it in. Send it in. We do, you know, lower level stuff all the time. We've got a game coming up from Rocket. And I think he's bronze, maybe silver. So not a problem. I like that both plays badly and Lion Cat left a barracks back home just in case bad things happened back there. So they're kind of hedging their bets. I like it. Plays badly is working on those marines. He's reactored one of his barracks, which is nice. Means you can have one fewer barracks. So there's three barracks from Lion Cat, but one of Plays Badly is reactored, so he can actually keep up in marine production. A uh, little bit of a supply block. Supply block of Rooney here from Lion Cat. He brought his SCVs home after doing them proxy barracks. I like it a lot. The supply block hurts my soul, though. He's making a supply depot, Falcon. Calm down. There we go. We're good to go. Making another one, too. So the problem here, as plays badly, Ninja expands left side over here at like the 10, 9.30 position. Is that the longer these proxies wait to be a thing, uh, the worse it is for the proxying player. So we got Stalkers and Reapers. Yeah, so these guys are one basing it too. 2v2s, man. Pretty cheesy. Pretty cheesy 2v2 ladder shenanigans, right? Like these guys just one based Stalker Reaper. What an interesting combo against a Terran Terran player here. Or Terran Terran team here, rather. Uh, plays badly. All right, so the Marines are like 345 is a good time to move in. Let's go. Up, 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 up. They've got that purple kind of hue on their backs. I mean, it really works for Lion Cat. Kind of weird for plays badly. Uh, that Marine or that Reaper escaped. This Reaper does not escape. So suddenly, I think Petrinus is aware of what's happening here. And he's like, oh. Uh, well, the Reapers come in to plays badly. And oh, well, this is Lion Cat's base, too. It just goes to town. Yeah, all these, reaper, all these Reapers are going to do terrible damage. Oh, did he recall his Stalker's home? He recalled his Stalker's home, but unupgraded Marines versus unupgraded Stalkers are pretty good. Yeah, pretty fantastic here. If you don't have Blink, it sucks to fight against them for sure. Uh, these, oh, actually, the SCVs fought back. What? 
Did not expect that to go as well as it did. Oh, as long as we're microing to within an inch of our lives here from Nerd Herd, good things are going to happen, buddy. Yeah, Stalkers, oh, if you're not microing perfectly, which is not going to happen at this level of StarCraft, Petridis just loses everything. Yo, Petridis' army currently consists of nothing. He's got 22 probes. He's warping in some Stalkers, but yeah, the stutter stepping of unupgraded Marines, man. Just music to the sounds of everybody's ears, but Lion's Cat's going to lose all of his, his stuff, too. Um, all right. So we're going to try to depower everything Petrinus has. Or, you know, not really focus our firing at all here. That's fine. Forge going down. I mean, taking down the workers of Nerd Herd, I feel like, should be a priority here because your workers are dying miserably. They are just there. Not happy at all. Yeah, here we go. Going after Nerd Herd. That's the play. That is the play. Killing his economy. Excellent. I mean, Petrinus can't do anything with his cash for the moment. He is throwing up some additional pylons to fix that problem. But as long as Petrinus' income can't be toward, can't be put towards anything good. Yeah, these Reapers are fighting too. But they dead. And I think that's it. I mean, this is just way too much stuff. 17 and 25 supply for plays badly in Lion Cat. It's not a lot. But it's going to be enough here. That stalker comes out. I mean, Reapers are real bad at base racing because they suck against buildings and they can't shoot up. Which, you know, Marines can. So that's why <laughs> Marines are good in this situation. Yeah. All right. Well, ah, everything, not everything depowered, but now the probes are dying from Petrinus. Real, real bad. And the income here is bad. Petrinus is sitting on 900 minerals. I mean, he could warp some stuff in. He's choosing... Not to do that. Is he not, not even supply blocked? Whatever. I mean, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening right now. It's hard for me to be like, you should be building stuff right now. Herpa derpa derp. Ooh, Lion Cat. Oh, took this gold base back here. He just lifted it and he's like, oh, I'm good. I still have these barracks down this way too. Nerd Herd flees with his orbital past these proxy barracks so they get scouted. But then the Reapers are covering them, and the rallies are bad. Oh, no. No. These probes from Petrinus are running around, but I, he doesn't have enough money to make another Nexus. It doesn't matter. I guess they're just trying to buy time for these Reapers to win the game. This is tough. This is very weird stuff here, man. Again, Reapers suck against buildings, but they do some damage against buildings, so it all works out. Yeah, I mean, Petrinus dead on his feet here. Yes, Nerd Herd has a command center, which he's landed, but he has exactly zero SCVs. And enough money to make a bunch. He's actually sitting on 1,800 minerals, which is pretty fantastic stuff. So the Marines are covering the barracks to allow more Marines to pr be produced, and the Reapers are like, we don't have to fight you. And that's probably true. Another command center. Okay, Lion Cat is looking towards the future of the economy right now. Plays badly. He's got 11 SCVs remaining. Uh, oh, right. He's got this space over here at the 930. He's benefiting from immensely. So that's really good stuff. Meow! Orbital dies. Yeah, he didn't really fly that far enough away, did he? So Nerd Herd is dead. I mean, he doesn't know that he's dead. He should know that he's dead. But he doesn't. Sometimes that happens, man. Yeah, Nerd Herd's being revealed... Petrinus is just done. Dunzo Babunzo. These Reapers, I don't know, 12 kills? Like 17 kills? They're doing all right in the murdering department here. 19, 13, 6, 7. Yeah, these Reapers are having a wonderful time. Living in the sunlight, sunlight loving in the moonlight, having a wonderful time. Uh, the YTM and D days. Uh, Nerd Herd is actually building. A new command center down south. So he is trying to buy as much time as he can with these Reapers. Keep everybody down economically as much as he can with these Reapers. But, like, yeah. He doesn't know about Lion Cat's base here. And that's going to be his downfall. Poor plays badly. Just like, can I just make a factory, please? And the Reapers say, no. Nine. You may not. Marines just, I guess, we'll just try to kill all the buildings we can. And supply block Nerd Herd in the next week here by killing all of these supply depots. Even though he's only got six supply, he has a zero supply available now because this command center is not done yet. Yeah, I mean, Reapers for Nerd Herd doing work way more than you've ever seen workers do. Although, there was a time when TBT was nothing but 
Five Rax Reaper versus Five Rax Reaper, it was a very dumb time. In StarCraft 2, I don't know if you remember that age. I might have cast a couple games where it was just Five Rax Reaper versus Five Rax Reaper. <laughs> it was very fun. I'm sure Terrans hated it, though. They hate TVT anyway, so no big loss. Lion Cat, check in. Uh, no base here, cool. No base down here, cool. Uh, she doesn't have any bases. Nerd Herd? Oh my gosh. Nerd Herd is not. He's, you're gonna make them build flying stuff, Nerd Herd. Nerd Herd! Stop it! <sighs> Alright, well, uh. Hey, look, a starport from Lion Cat, though. Yeah, he is. He's hiding this out here. Look how Tronish this is. Nightscape's a cool map, man. It's like this grid system. Check the top left. Says, um, Nerd. Did Nerd Herd ping up there? That's interesting. Weird he pinged up there. Yeah, not lifting these buildings. Or the barracks, anyway. That barracks. That was a weird choice. Reapers might find. Oh, but that's a planetary from Plays Badly here. That's going to be tough for Reapers to deal with, for sure. Lion Cat expanded up to the upper right from where his base is. This command center is still hiding down here, so we're going to times two this sucker. The Reapers are trying. Ow. But every time they get too close. Ah! The planetary murders them. So, yeah, that's uh, that's what I was worried about happening. Petritus, once again, I'm not even sure if he's still in this game. He might have left. Who knows? Nerder tries to land here on Lion Cat's base, and it's like, ah, crap. Well, there's a battle cruiser coming in. Is he going to upgrade? He's going to make a planetary because he's got an engineering bay up here. <laughs> oh, this game is dumb. I like it. I like how dumb it is. This guy Nerd Herd's playing hilariously. And then Nerd Herd is actually gonna bring his command center over here and take Lion Cat's main. He's not gonna hide it. Why would he hide it? He's like, I need this planet, this battle cruiser to build now. Oh boy. Ow! 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 It's burning! Just get out of there! Just SCVs, no! Just get that. He almost ugh. made an SCP. He's repairing it, but then a BC shows up, but it's like, oh, okay, well, that's dead. Yeah, so Planetary dies with like 87 kills, taps out, and that's it. Plays badly, and Lion Cut are our winners in 12 minutes. Again, you can't be longer than seven minutes if it's action packed. And it was. This was action packed, man. I mean, Nerd Herd could have tapped out earlier, but, you know, he did some fun stuff. Proxying a Planetary on top of your enemy's base is fun. His Reaper control against this planetary could have been more awesome, but, you know, it's cool. These aren't. These aren't pros. So, well done. That's a GG. Got a couple more replays to go for you today. Hope you're enjoying the cheese. I know that I'm enjoying casting it, and we'll be back after these messages. All right, we're on Waterfall. Going to be Zader versus Rocket. Top right, going to be Zader. Bottom left, going to be Rocket. So, we're back on... Oh, we haven't been on Waterfall today, have we? Hmm. All right. So, Skull Cheeseburger says a rocket from Trash Panda. We've got Rocket Raccoon spinning around as always. And a little uh, heart emoji in ASL. All right, man. So, it's going to be another PVT here. <clears throat> and I feel like Rocket's going to be the cheeser. He is most of the time... The cheeser. Wow, I think I'm coming down with something that my son had. Ah, kids. Harbingers of illness. But we love them anyway. Scary boogeyman. <laughs> Zader. In response to these skull cheeseburger emojis that Rocket sent. <laughs> Mr. Boogeyman to you, says Rocket. Well, alrighty then, Rocket. We believe. We believe in what you're into here. And what the heck, dude? He's throwing up a supply depot at the top of Zader's wall, so he can't wall off. He wasn't going to wall off anyway. You're a Terran player. If you wall off against incoming Marines and Marauders, your wall just dies. Like, he's doing the right thing. Right? He's going gateway. He's getting a forge. You can't humiliate me if I don't let you, says Zader. Interesting, interesting to say at this stage of the game. I don't know what that's all about. There we go. Rocket double proxying down here. 
Just making sure his Marines can get in because he's got to be... Oh, then he's pulling the boys. Okay. So this isn't a worker rush, but it's definitely going to be some Marines and a bunch of SCVs trying to murder our guy, Zader, here. Build a pile or a cannon right here, Zader. Just do it. Trust me. Do it and thank me later because you're gonna. I don't know about the second gas, man. You got a bunch of money, though. Look. I'm not kidding. Cannon. Cannon, like, here. Cannon here. Actually, can you put a cannon here? Probe life, says Zader. And then, oh, wow, okay. Rocket's gonna absolutely just float his barracks in. The SCV train is here. And here. <laughs> Alright, so here's the fight. I don't know why the barracks are floating instead of making, you know, Marines, which would really help with this, but okay. Alright, Rocket. I'm on board with this. Dude lands one, immediately starts producing nothing from it. Lands the second one, immediately starts producing nothing from it. Hey, look who's making cannons! Zader is! Look who's gonna lose the pylon powering those cannons! Zader also is! SCDs are better fighter than probes are? Better fighters than probes are. Good game, noob, says Rocket. He's bad manner from time to time. Oh, the cannon is up, but it's not powered! And that's it! Zader's a dead man. Fare thee well, Zader. This is just... Remember when Zader was like, you can't humiliate me if I don't let you? And then Rocket was like, let me humiliate you real quick. And he does. Oh, and he kills the cannon before it gets powered? Like a half second before it gets powered? GG, man. And Zader GG's! What a Chad! Good man, Zader. Rocket being continually bad manner. Shield battery adept. Gonna fight for her right to party. Shield battery overcharge. You get you three shot marines. So you'll get them. SCV working away on that shield battery. I mean, this adept is racking up the kills. Five kills. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Six kills. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, shield battery's out of energy done. All right, we're out. We're out. We're simply out. We're simply out of everything here. And that's it. Rocket wins it. Rocket, work on the bad manner, man. Your games are interesting, but let's not be mean to people. Especially when they GG you. Like, come on. He's a GG. You gotta respond with a GG at that point. If you're beating him, come on. Show some bad manner. Show some grace in victory. Grace in losing is hard. Grace in victory can be hard, too. Yeah, so... <laughs> oh, Zader, just not ready. Just not ready. Didn't fight with the probes well. Didn't get that cannon up in time. He didn't know what he was dealing with. I don't think he scouted at all. Yeah, he just blindly opened. Didn't send a probe out. That's why you send a probe out. Okay, send a probe out. Promise, it's a good idea. Okay, we got one more cheese to go. Hope you've enjoyed the cheese compilation thus far. I love you all. And what do we got next? Final cheese of the month this is going to be Baniac and Arcanum on Cosmic Sapphire. Bottom right going to be Arcanum. Top left going to be Baniac. Hey, look, it's the same map. Hyper one super cheesed a Zerg and one handily. So Arcanum, you going to be the cheeser? Not moving any SCVs out. Just, you know. Walling off his ramp with a supply depot, and it's a pool first here from Baniac. At around, I don't know, 14 supply? Maybe 12? Anyway, it's a very, very early pool for Legacy of the Void. <sighs> and making a barracks behind it. Oh, two barracks. Okay, barracks top of the wall, barracks behind the mineral line, kind of hiding this one and getting some gas. All right, Arcanum, if you're just going to cheese a Zerg player, figure out this whole thing here, but I don't know, Baniac kind of countered that, right? Baniac's like it's a ZVT on Cosmic Sapphire. Let's just get a pool first. Let's deal with any attempts to build barracks, wall me off inside my own two-base situation here and killing my natural. Let's just handle that now, shall we? And he's not wrong. He's not wrong to do it this way. It's smart. I gotta say, on this map and a ZVT, I'd just be really interested in doing this Darn near same thing. So 18 hatching here is Baniac. I don't know if the timings make any sense, because again, this is a lower level game, but Ling's moving out. They're like, okay, no barracks here. Cool. Overlord checking, you know, the corners just to make sure there's no barracks back here, or sometimes that happens. 
SCV is coming across the map, but Arcanum's got a full wall off and is going for double reactor barracks with refineries. So Reapers. Okay. Uh, intriguing. No gas, which means no ling speed, which means slow lings, which means all these lings are going to die. Unless you can knock down this wall, which you shouldn't be able to because a good Terran player will repair this wall and you'll never get through. But you know what? Sometimes people aren't exactly great at StarCraft, and sometimes they don't repair their wall very fast or fast enough. So there we go. Two SCVs on the repair for one Supply Depot. Two SCVs on the repair for the other Supply Depot. We're fine. No need to panic. Just going to make our Reapers. Oh, this is amazing. Yeah. Two Barracks Reactored Reaper. Dude, he's like, all right, I'm going to need some gas. <laughs> Whatever happens next, I'm going to need some gas. I'm not winning this game with just minerals. So yeah, like these Reapers pop out. These Lings need to, are just going to die. They're not getting through the wall, and also they're just going to die. Ooh, these SCVs weren't repairing. That is a problem with SCVs. Once they repair to something to 100% health, they'll stop auto-repairing it. And you have to tell them to repair it again. You can set them to... Okay, they won't stop auto-repairing, but they will stop repairing because you told them to repair it until it was to full health. But auto repair will always repair something in range that needs repairing. So, <clears throat> Baniac's like, ah, oh, crap, Reapers. Um, quick, get a Roach Warren. Quick, make a Spine Crawler. Quick, make another Spine Crawler. They take a while to build. Reaper, hmm. Here goes nothing. These slowlings are just like, we hate our lives. We're not even getting speed at all here. Are there enough to take down a queen? Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. Reapers healing up before they go back in. Maybe waiting for reinforcements. There are four being produced at a time here. This is where you want Ravagers. Uh, okay, well that sucked. But it, you know, there's enough time for that spine to come up. These slowlings are just not. They're not it, Chief. Oh, look at them just die. Why are you making more lings? Save the resources for roaches, Badiac. All right, okay. Uh, uh, uh. Well, uh, the Reapers are like, hey, more slow links. Neat. La 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 la. We're just going to murder all of you, though. 14 links have died. Nothing has died for Arcanum. Ooh, very close to losing a Reaper there. There's enough Reapers to kill a Roach. Oh, that's bad. That's so bad. The guys on gas are dying. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Maybe don't, don't fight multiple Roaches at once. Oh, these drones... 88 charge happened. In the oh, losing another Reaper. Okay, okay. You can whittle down this Reaper count to a much less terrifying number. Yeah, but they've got Roaches out. Ah! I don't know about continuing to engage here. He does almost kill another. He's like one-to-one -one Roach to Reaper here. That's not good. And that's it, man. Baniac <laughs> wins it because he got some Roaches out. And Arcanum was like, ah, okay. Bad news. Hmm, my Zerg opponent is on two bases. He's got roaches out. He could make some Ravagers, too. If, well, he doesn't quite have the gas for that, but he could have the gas for that because he has a ton of minerals. Putting some of the workers on gas would have been nice. Replacing the ones on gas that died would, would have been good, too. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, technically, roaches can't... They don't have the range to handle Reapers if you micro them very, very well. Which, again, expecting somebody to micro Reapers at this level super duper well is just asking a lot. Baiting at 150 APM, Arcanum 131, so like diamond level probably. But yeah, these need to be Ravagers. I mean, at the professional level, you will not see like Serral or Rainer make Roaches in this situation. They will make some Roaches and turn them into Ravagers for the extra range that they have and the extra speed they've got. Because it really helps in chasing those Reapers down and engaging with them from a distance instead of just right up on them. But yeah, Arcanum... Couldn't quite make it happen. Really should have just not engaged, engaged with these roaches at all. Swung back around, maybe to the natural base. Just keep them running. Keep them moving. Get behind this mineral line, right? Kill these dudes. Swing back and jump down. It's tough. It's tough sledding once the roaches start coming out. But it could have been done by Arcanum. So well done. Very, very well done there by Baniac getting the win. Remember there was nothing killed for Arcanum? Now there's 12 Reapers dead. Yeah, that was a blink of an eye, and you missed it. But those Reapers definitely spent a lot of time dead. Mm. So, yeah, again, special thanks to my screeners, Somicron, Stefan, Jim, and Sniper Monkey, all of them longtime subscribers to the channel. I mean, Somicron's been around since at least 2015. I want to say it was 2015. Maybe it was 2016, but either way, yeah. 
Thanks again, Somicron. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Sniper Monkey. You know Sniper Monkey's name, too, for screening all the Midrake Madness and Brave New World. So, très magnifique. Way to end it on a good Zerg win there, Baniac. Nicely done. And that is going to be it for me today. So, this has been the Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void at a Cheese compilation. Go ahead. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.